been lifted. Grace is waiting. Well. I want to welcome you back to another look into the book of Matthew. We are surveying the book of Matthew, and today we're in chapter 19. So if you would take a Bible, join me there. I'd like to spend just a few minutes with you taking a glance at the entire chapter and what try to come to what Jesus is teaching. So if you have Matthew chapter 19, uh, there are 30 verses, 30 verses in this chapter, and I see four distinct parts that uh, will benefit you probably if you can keep them in the context. And if I had to sum up the chapter in one word, it would be the word relationships. Um, so let's take a look at Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19 verses 1 through 15 is the first section, um, the first survey part that I see that we should probably look at together. Uh, the Verses 1 through 12 is obvious. 13, 14, and 15 are a little less obvious, but seem to be a part of the master teaching on the subject of divorce, which is the severing of relationship, particularly the marriage relationship. And Jesus is going to teach um, for our society, for the 21st century postmodern world, very strong teachings. Um, of course, in his day, it was not. So, um, not as strong. So, Jesus is going to teach on the subject of a husband who in the Jewish society seemed to have all the power of the marriage and uh, the subject of a husband putting away his wife and then um, giving a bill of divorcement. And by the time that Jesus came along, this bill of divorcement had evolved into absurd, uh, absurd realities. And because of the hardness of the heart, Jesus said, Moses suffered uh, this situation of divorce, but it was never God's design. And now, I want to speak a word of encouragement. This subject has touched many, many, many lives and many families. And know that we are not painting it today as an unforgivable act. However, uh, we should be very, very, very alert to the teaching of Jesus and the consequences. And I believe verses 13, 14, and 15, on the heels of this teaching about divorce, is one of the greatest consequences. When a family breaks apart, in verse 13, then there were brought unto him little children that he should put his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked him. Right after teaching about the breakup of the home, Jesus <laughs> prays for the greatest consequence of the home, and that's the children, the ones that are going to bear the load the rest of their life. And, of course, Jesus rebukes his disciples who rebuked him and pl puts his hands on them and prays for them. The second relationship in this uh, text that I see is verse 16 through verse 26. Verse 16 through 26 is relationship with riches or material affluence. Um, relationship with mammon, as the Bible calls it. Uh, our wealth can be a, a restriction our relationship to wealth. If wealth owns us rather than we own wealth, then um, it's not a good situation. So Jesus in verses 16 through 26 is dealing with a man who is a rich young ruler. He's young, he's rich, and he's a ruler. Three setups for uh, 
the lack of maturity and riches it seemed handled him because when Jesus told him, take all that you have, sell it, give it to the poor and come follow me, he wasn't able to do that. Um, so relationship, as you read through this chapter, our relationship with wealth, with um, accumulation, possessions, those are, it's an important relationship to keep in proper balance. The third, uh, the, it's really the fourth because we have uh, husband-wife relationship, the children's relationship, relationship with riches. And then this fourth is the apostles came to him after Jesus had interacted with uh, this young, rich young ruler who was unwilling to give up uh, what Jesus asked him to give up. And they came and said, we've given up everything. And so what's left, what's the reward for this? In verses 27 through 30, Jesus um, puts it into perspective for them. He helps them remember that temporal things, although they're important, they're, they're not priority. And eternal things are priority. And uh, so as you study this chapter, keep these relationships in mind. Our relationship to sacrifice is that last one. So the first part is relationship husband and wife. Second part, relationship to children. The third, our relationship to wealth. And fourth, our relationship to sacrifice. Let's not get blinded, Jesus is saying at the end of the chapter. Let's not get blinded to temporal things being the reward for following him. And he will bless us. We obey his word. It's the law of the harvest. We sow, we will reap. And uh, if we sow to the Spirit, we shall of the Spirit reap life eternal. And that's what he's trying to get his disciples to remember. So hope you enjoy surveying uh, Matthew chapter 19. Certainly message us any questions that you might have. And if we can come at an answer together, I think we'll all grow by it. God bless you. Go and have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.